reading from our epistle and gospel text. Love is patient and kind. Love does not boast or envy. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. For he will be delivered over to the Gentiles and will be mocked and shamefully treated and spit on. And after flogging him, they will kill him. And on the third day, he will rise. They inquired about what this meant. And they told him Jesus of Nazareth was passing by. The blind man said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And again, he cried even louder, Son of David, have mercy on me. The Lord said, What do you want me to do? And he said, Let me recover my sight. And Jesus said to him, Recover your sight. Your faith has made you well. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or, or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. How many of you can say that you, can, that you have done those things? How many of you can say that you've done those things? This verse is used often in weddings. It's actually used sometimes as vows, but it's a farce. It's a lie. If we are to say that our love is patient and kind, our love does not envy or boast, our love is not arrogant or rude, our love does not insist on its own way, our love is not irritable or, or resentful, it does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. My love is great. My love is perfect. I can love my spouse in any and every possible way. I, my love is absolutely perfect. Then you're a liar. The reality of this text is that every time you see love, the Greek term is agape. Agape is a Greek term that does not mean brotherly, marital love. It means God's love for His creation. And if it means God's love for His creation, then we can simply see that it's God's love that is patient and kind. God's love that does not envy and boast. God's love that is not arrogant or rude. It does not, God's love does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable, etc. All, all these verbs and nouns are God to you. Not you to your spouse or you to one another or you even to God. God loves you. I think Lutherans sometimes don't say that enough, at least not that simply. God loves you. And He expects, through His law, that you love one another. But can you do this? Can you love each other? The reality is, when we sin, we sin hard. When we sin, we sin to a degree that would surprise each and every one of you. If your Sixth Commandment sins were laid out in front of everyone, we would all go running from the building, embarrassed and ashamed. If your first through third command of the commandments were shown, laid out, 
you, we would all see that God is not your true God, but that the things that you love are your true God. Because your love is not patient, your love is hellacious, your love is, scandal your love is scandalous, and your love is evil. And is that surprising to you? When you are the one who has to do it, you can't do it well enough. When you're the one that runs the verbs, the verbs will run you directly to hell. We must look to Christ. If we look to Christ, we see Him give the gospel to you. Here, this is love. For He will be delivered over to the Gentiles, and He will be mocked and shamefully treated and spit upon. After they, and after flogging Him, they will kill Him. And on the third day, He will rise from the dead. That's the Gospel. That's what it means to love. This is the love that Christ has for you. Agape from Christ to you, receiving all of His benefits. Because when He was on the cross dying, He was thinking of you. He was thinking of me. And so all of these sins that are hellacious, scandalous, and evil, upon repentance and prayer, they are forgiven. As far as the east is from the west. And so, dear Christian friends, I implore you to do what the blind man did. Pray. Pray. When you pray, pray hard. When you pray, pray for one another. Do not let the Word return to you void lest you stop your ears full of pride, full of envy, full of lust, to where you cannot hear the Word of God anymore. Just pray. Because this man who was blind, that was not his only ailment. The man who was blind would do well to remain blind and have his sins forgiven, more so than having him see and have his sins retained. And so the first thing that I would ask you to pray is this. Simply, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. Son of David, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy upon me, a sinner. Or as Luther says, I am yours. Save me. I am yours. Save me. Over and over and over until you believe God has heard it. You see, when this man was praying, the crowd was telling him to be quiet. You are not a part of our group. You are set apart from our group. Blindness and begging, we can't take that. We can't have that in our group. And so we amputate one another. We cut each other off from our own love. We, can, we do not do well enough to show each other the love of Christ. But Christ does. And so I beg you, beg you, forgive me of my sin, forgive me of all that I have done wrong, and I pray that you will go home and you will pray hard, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me, for I am a blind man. My tongue is only set for deceit. I hear, for I am deaf to the truth. I am yours. Save me.
I am yours. Have mercy on me. Let us not be part of the crowd who tells one another to shut up when they're praying. But rather, how about bring them along and pray with them so that they may hear. Lord, have mercy upon me. Recover my sight. And hear Christ say, Recover your sight. Your faith has made you well. And then get up knowing that that's true and that your prayer was heard by God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And nothing more could be more true for you than the forgiveness of the Holy Trinity. Amen. And now may the peace which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts in Christ Jesus now and forever.